Father's voice resounded. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. John tried to dissuade him. It is I who needs baptism from you, John said. And yet, you come to me. But Jesus replied, Leave it like this for the time being. It is fitting that we should in this way do all that righteousness demands. At this, John gave in to him. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water and suddenly the heavens open and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him. And a voice spoke from heaven, This is my Son, the Beloved. My favor rests on him. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So good morning, everybody. If I haven't seen you from last year, wish you a happy new year. Although it's running out of time for that now. So today, as Father Jerry told us, it's the baptism of our Lord. And we're reminded that we receive baptism as well. You might remember your baptism date. We all know our birthdays. We're not as familiar with our baptism date, but it's quite important. Not sure if many of you have been to a, a baptism recently. I mean the church baptism, not the party that starts at three in the afternoon, goes on half the week. Often we can go through phases in our lives when we're, we don't see baptism. I remember the first baptism I was at, I was five years of age, it was my younger brother. And then I wasn't at a baptism for another 25 years until I did my first baptism as a priest. So we can go for periods without being to a baptism. And we can forget what happens there. And most of us weren't conscious of our own baptism and all that went on there. I'm sure when many of you were baptized or when you had your own children baptized, you wanted to get the child baptized as soon as possible because original sin was there. And lo and behold, if anything happened to the child before it was baptized, what would happen to it was the big problem at the time. Today we don't speak of baptism that way, but original sin is still there, and we explain it or package it really in a different way. I often meet people in context outside of church, and when they find out I'm a priest, they'll say to me, Father, I need a blessing, or really, I don't need a blessing, I need an exorcism, they say to me. I think they're trying to tell me that they feel far away from God or they feel bad about themselves or something bad has happened in their lives or they've done something bad and they feel unworthy about God and they feel the need of a, an exorcism like a powerful blessing that will bring them back close to God and I usually respond, I say to them I say, are you a Catholic? and they say, oh yeah, I'm a Catholic and I said, well if you're a Catholic and if you have been baptised you have already received an exorcism. That sounds a bit too profound. And say, what do you mean? I say, in your baptism, there is a part of the ceremony, and it's called the rite of exorcism. And there you receive exorcism. There you receive the power to fight against evil. There you overcome original sin. There you get the power to overcome anything bad 
that yourself or the world throws up against you. All of us receive that in our baptism, but we forget about it, or we're not aware of it, or we're not told about it. So we don't need an exorcism, we have it already. What we do need is to renew our belief in the power of God to overcome all the evil in the world and the bad things that come up in ourselves. Because original sin is there, we human beings are faulty by nature. There's something that if we don't work against, drags us down, brings us into difficult places, brings us into evil places. There's something in us that wants to make us turn our back against God and go our own stubborn way. And that's original sin. So the power of God helps us to work against that and bring us to better people and to a better place. So all of us have received an exorcism already in baptism, the ability to fight against evil. <clears throat> Today, let us remind ourselves of that and let us renew our willingness to work with God to overcome evil in our lives and in our world. So that's the first thing we can say about baptism today. The second thing we say is a big focus today on baptism is we become members of the church. We're formally welcomed into the church. We are the children of our parents. But on our baptism day, we say we become the children of God. On our baptism day, God says to us what he said to his own son, Jesus. He says, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Or you are my beloved daughter. With you, I am well pleased. God says that to us on our baptism day. And he says to us every day, if we need to hear it. But I suppose often we don't listen or choose to hear. Because we are God's adopted children, we become members of God's family, the church. And on the baptism day, parents and godparents, they accept the responsibility of passing on the faith to their children. It's a big ask of parents and godparents. And maybe today we remind ourselves that at some stage we promised the church to pass on the faith to the child that was baptized that is ours. I suppose often that doesn't happen. It doesn't work the way we'd like. We'd like others to make a better effort. But today let's remind ourselves of the promise we made to pass on the faith to the church as parents, as godparents, and I suppose as the wider community. As a christening, I often get all the people assembled just to bless the child, put a sign of the cross on the forehead of the child, reminding people that as that child will grow in life, because you are a significant person in their lives, you're at their christening, you will have an impact on that child. Your influence will be felt by that child. You will leave your mark on the child in the same way as you make the mark of the cross on them on their baptismal day. So it reminds us to be kind, to be good, to leave a good impression on the generation coming after us. So that's the second thing about baptism. We become members of God's church, of the family of God. Last thing I just want to point out about a baptism is we receive many blessings on our baptismal day. And one of the blessings we receive is a blessing with the oil of chrism and chrism is the oil of Christ so we go home from our baptismal day Christ-like. Almost two years ago when we reopened Clonard Church here we had the rite of dedication of the Clonard. When it was opened a hundred years ago it wasn't dedicated it was simply blessed but we had the formal rite of dedication of Clonard Church and during that rite of dedication the bishop, Bishop Trainer, he blessed the altar behind me with the oil of chrism and he blessed different sections of the walls of this church with the oil of chrism to make this church a holy dedicated place. When you baptize a child, when I baptize a child, we use the very same oil, the oil of chrism, to baptize and bless the child. So when you take a child home from a christening, that child is as holy as Clonard Church or St. Peter's Cathedral, or St. Paul's Church, or any church that has been blessed in the name of God. So you can see the extraordinary sacredness that comes with a christening that makes that child holy. And that's why so many people, if not all people, 
want that for their child. I suppose the challenge is to keep that holiness alive. The struggles of life, the long nights when the child won't sleep, the pains of growing up, we forget about the holiness we received in our baptism and can easily forget it. But today, in the baptism of our Lord, let us remind us ourselves again of the holiness of baptism, the holiness that we received, that we left at church on our baptism, Christ-like, and our challenge is to try and work to get that back, to be more Christ-like in our daily lives. So I'll just conclude today, we're talking about the baptism of our Lord. I just said three things about baptism. Number one, at our baptism, we received an extraordinary power to fight against evil. The right of exorcism gave us the power to overcome all the evil in our world. Secondly, on our baptismal day, we became members of the church, adopted children of Christ. We promised to pass on the faith to the children coming behind us. We remind ourselves of those promises we made. And finally, on our baptism day, we became Christ-like. We were blessed with the holy oil that made us truly holy. Our challenge is to remind ourselves of that, to work on that, and to try and grow and work on being holy from day to day, week to week, and month to month. So I'm going to invite you now to stand, and Father Reynolds will invite us now together to renew <coughs> our own baptismal promises that were made on our part on our baptismal day by our parents and godparents. We've renewed them many times. Let's them renew them again now as we enter a new year together. From Father Michael's sermon, we all realize how, how, how great a feast and important a day this is. So I say to you, <clears throat> do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting?